Reading Honest Abe, paintings by Malka Zeldis, words by Edith Kunhart. Honest Abe. Abraham Lincoln was born in Kentucky in a log cabin. His parents... Thomas and Nancy Lincoln were poor. His father worked hard as a carpenter and a farmer, and his mother helped him in the fields. Neither his mother nor his father could read or write. Abraham had an older sister named Sarah. When he was old, enough to go to school, he and Sarah walked two miles to the one-room schoolhouse. Children from every grade sat in the same room. All the schooling Abraham Lincoln ever had added up to one year, but he was eager to learn, and he taught himself. He taught himself lots of things. When Abraham was seven, the family moved 100 miles away to Indiana. They packed up everything they owned on two horses and traveled through the wilderness. There were wolves and bears in the woods they had to cross. The first year they were in Indiana, Abraham helped his father build a cabin, a log cabin. It had one room and a dirt floor. When it was finished, Abraham slept up in the loft. His mattress was a pile of dry leaves. Two years later, Abraham's mother died. Abraham played with his cousin Dennis, who had come to live with them, but nothing was the same. Of course, it's never the same when you lose your mom. Right, guys? I love my mom. My mom yeah. I love my mom. Moms are very important. That is the truth. Another year went by, and Thomas Lincoln left Abraham and Sarah and Dennis alone in the cabin and went back to Kentucky. Weeks later, he returned with a new wife. Her name was also Sarah, but Thomas called her Sally. She brought with her three, her three children and all her furniture from her old home. Abraham loved Sally, and she loved him. She got Thomas to put a wooden floor in the cabin and to fix the leaky roof. Now eight people lived in one room. Imagine that, eight people in one room. Sally helped Abraham to study at night. He read by firelight. He borrowed books and newspapers. He read about George Washington. He read the Bible. He wrote poems. He taught himself. Seems like a, seems like a, a, a theme in this book is that Abraham Lincoln taught himself, okay? This is a lot of what I've talked to you guys about, right? About your own education? About your education being yours and no one else's. All right, Abraham was going strong and tall. His father hired him out to other farmers for 25 cents a day. He chopped down trees for firewood and split logs to make rail fences. He was, very good. He was a very good worker. Sometimes he jumped up on a tree stump and told funny stories and jokes. People loved listening to him. Abraham almost always had a book in his pocket or in his hand. He even carried a book with him when he plowed the field. He would read while his horse was resting at the end of a corn row. When he was 19 years old, Abraham was six feet, four inches tall, three inches taller than Mr. Dawson. 
He weighed more than 200 pounds and was a powerful wrestler and a swift runner. Abraham worked on a flatboat on the Mississippi River. Flatboats carried log, carried hogs and corn to market. The boat traveled down the river to New Orleans. There Abraham saw slaves. These black people did not get paid for the work they did. White people owned them and could sell them. Abraham thought this was wrong. wrong. Absolutely. Soon after Abraham got to New Orleans, Thomas Lincoln moved his family to Illinois. And soon after that, Abraham left home. He moved to New Salem, a small town in Illinois, where he worked in a store. After a while, people began to come to the store just to hear Abraham tell stories. People called him Abe or Honest Abe. Once a woman paid him six and a quarter cents too much. He walked three miles to find her and pay her back. Abe had many jobs in New Salem. He was a postmaster, delivered mail, and surveyed land. Good job, guys. We're over halfway there. Now we talk about Abe's, Abe's ascent into government. Abe liked visiting courthouses and hearing lawyers' arguments. Many people came to Abe for advice. He decided to become a lawyer himself. He studied hard. He worked at night. And in three years, he became a lawyer because he learned by himself. He taught himself lots of things. Abe moved to Springfield where he met Mary Todd. Mary was 21 years old. Abe was 30. Mary was popular. She liked dancing and spoke French. Abe and Mary Todd Lincoln were, buried, were married. Abe wore a tall silk hat in which he kept bills, notes, legal papers. Sometimes, when he took off his hat, the papers fell on the ground. Abe's office was in Springfield, but he also rode to small towns far out on the prairie to help decide legal causes. cases. Sorry, He made many friends. He ran for Congress and was elected. A few years later, Abe decided to run for United States Senate. He ran against Stephen A. Douglas. Douglas believed that slavery should continue. Lincoln believed that slavery should end. Lincoln and Douglas traveled all over Illinois debating each other. When the people voted, Douglas won. But the debates made Lincoln famous. So did Lincoln win or did Lincoln lose? Oh, some of you aren't listening. Did Lincoln win or did Lincoln lose? Lose. He lost. He lost that race for Senate. But the debates, the way that he talked about his arguments, made him famous. Lincoln and Douglas ran against each other again two years later. This time, the contest was for the presidency of the United States. And Abe Lincoln won. Abe, Mary, and their three sons moved into the White House in Washington, D.C. The boys loved the old house. They played in the attic, rode their pony on the lawn, chased goats, chased their goats through the halls. Two weeks after Abraham Lincoln became president, the Civil War started. It was a war between people who lived in the northern states most of whom believed slavery should end, and the people who lived in the southern states, most of whom believed slavery should continue. Almost two years passed. Thousands of soldiers had been killed in the war, and the South seemed to be winning. In addition, Willie, the president's 12-year-old son, died. It was this difficult time, 
It was at this difficult time that Lincoln wrote the Emancipation Proclamation. This was a milestone on the road to the final end of slavery. Two years later, the 13th Amendment to the Constitution outlawed slavery in the United States forever. It took a while for that to actually take effect, but it was a very important part in history. The war continued. A terrible battle took place at the little town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Thousands of soldiers were killed there. Five months later, President Lincoln went to the battlefield to dedicate a cemetery to those who had died. The speech he made, known as the Gettysburg Address, lasted only two minutes but remains one of the most famous speeches in American history. He said that no one would ever forget the brave men who had died there, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The war ended after more than four years. I've been so... I've never been so happy in my life, the president said. Five days later, president, the president and Mrs. Lincoln went to a theater. As they watched a play, a man who was furious at the president for freeing the slaves crept up behind him and shot him in the head. The bullet went into his brain. President Lincoln remained unconscious through the night. In the morning, he died. His body lay in a coffin in the, in the White House, and many people cried. A train took President Lincoln's body on the long trip back to Illinois. Thousands of people stood by the tracks to say goodbye. He was given a funeral in 10 different cities along the way. Finally, the train reached Springfield, where he was buried. Honest Abe was home. And right here you'll find the Gettysburg Address. Do you guys mind if I read it really quick? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this con continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the Proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a resting place for those who here gave their lives. That that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot con concrete, consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember, what we say here. But it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we have increased devotion to the cause that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we were highly, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. And that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth.
And that was the Gettysburg Address. All right. Like, like the kids said. Subscribe. Read every single.